Well, I pray, Lord, I want your will most of all, but I love that woman. He prayed, Lord, most of all, I want your will, but I love that woman. Time he got done praying, he said, Lord, I want your will, but most of all, I want that woman. His prayer changed around completely before he got done praying. <laughs> will of God didn't matter. He wanted his own way. And sometimes we seek God it's that way. I haven't always wanted to do what God told me to do. But it always paid. It was always right in the long run. Amen. I believe in inquiring of the Lord. I Thirteen is filled with great text. Amen. Like verse 12, for instance. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Great evangelistic text, isn't it? Another great text uh, in uh, Proverbs chapter 14 is verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Woo-wee, hallelujah. Amen. Own ways, own self. Amen. Oh, glory. Well, let's read another one. Uh, verse 32. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. We could say in his own wickedness, couldn't we? In his wickedness. But the righteous have hope in his death. One more. Verse 34, great evangelistic text of Proverbs chapter 14. Every preacher just about it in the world from the beginning till now has preached uh, one or more of these great texts. Amen. Verse 34, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Yeah, with that in mind, we will preach for a little while this morning on a subject which I will choose to call Sentenced to Die in a Wilderness of Our Own Making. I can say to some folks, you've had your chance. Time's up. Amen. You're going to be turned into the wilderness. There's a bunch of them. Right now. Amen. Irreversibly. Have been turned into their a wilderness of their own making. They'll never get out of that wilderness. They made it, and they're going to die in it. Mark it down. I'm speaking prophetically this morning. The voice of the Lord is speaking through this poor creature as an oracle. Amen. The judge is wrapping his gavel. They had their chance. They could have done better. The sentence is to the wilderness. You made it. Now you walk through it and you die in it. The rest of you have got a chance this morning to run for your life. Amen. Run while running's good. While you're young and impressionable, when you got a chance, run. Amen. Book of Numbers, they sent out 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan. Ten were so scared they beat the others back. Amen. With a bad report. 
Amen. Way later than the others, here comes Joshua and Caleb, you know, with a big load on their shoulders. I mean, boy, bunches of grapes hanging to the ground. Amen. And he was probably singing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come. They, they made it later because it's carrying such a heavy load. Free samples from Canaan's land. Amen. Bringing in the sheaves. And everybody's face is all long. Everybody's lips all turned down. Amen. And here they are all happy and singing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. And ain't nobody laughing, nobody shouting, nobody getting happy, and everybody's crying. Amen. And Joshua and Caleb said, what's wrong? So let's go in, let's claim the land. God's give us the land. But they said, these other ten said, there's giants in the land. We can't take that land. And the, the cities are walled to the heavens and we can't have that land. And amen. And Joshua and Caleb said, just look. Just look at these fruits. Look at these big bunches of grapes we got. Uh, amen. Just look at all these things that God promised us. Uh, let's go get it. Don't you know that their defense has departed from them and that God has given us the land? Uh, amen. And you know what the Bible said? They wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. Amen. God began to talk to Moses. Amen. He said, get out of the way, Moses. I'm going to kill them all. And Moses begged God, said, don't kill them. Because if you do, said, they'll say that God wasn't able to bring his people into the land of promise. Amen. All right. <laughs> all right, Moses said, I won't kill them all now. Amen. But he said, about 20 years old and upward, amen, they'll die. And immediately the ten spies that brought the bad report died before the Lord of the plague. Except Joshua and Caleb. Amen. And Moses told the people all the words that God said and they saw the ten spies fall dead before God of the plague. Amen. And they said, we, we changed our mind, Moses. We'll go up. And we'll claim the land, Moses said, don't do it. Said the Amalekites are up there, said they'll kill you. Said God's changed his mind about you, you're going to have to go through the wilderness. And they, they got up there, you know, and they got all armed up, you know, and they got all, amen, encouraged, and they went up against the Amalekites, and amen, and they chased them and slew many of them. And they turned into the wilderness. It was too late for everybody above 20 years old and upward to go into Canaan. They had their chance. None of them would go. Not even Moses would get to go in. Because he would have to go through the wilderness with that bunch of rebels and put up with them. And he put up with them so long that he lost his cool and smoked a rock instead of speaking to the rock. And God said, Moses, you can look in, but you can't go in. Amen. Amen. I want you to know they had miracles every day. They lived on miracles every day. But mark it down. They were still in the wilderness and they was going to die there. The whole crowd. These are a bunch of people that have left holiness, left righteousness. Amen. And they found them a wily church where you can have the world. Amen. And have God at the same time. Amen. And they boast miracles every day. But don't you doubt it for a minute. They're in the wilderness as deep as you can get. And they'll never get out. They'll never make it out. It's too late. 
for those that have come and gone from the place of the holy to ever turn around. Most of them never will nor can. Amen. They're locked in on oblivion. They're locked in on destruction. Amen. It is a destiny of every man sooner or later to reap what he sows. Amen. A way that seemeth right may be entertained with many miracles. At least professed wise amen but every man has his chance mark it down some have already had it and let me say some of you will not have many more chances amen the ultimate reaping, verse 14. The backslider and heart shall be filled with his own ways. That's the saddest thing that can happen to most of us. To be filled with our own ways. Amen. My God. Amen. Listen to verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. Filled to the brim with his own ways, his own bitterness. Amen. Sooner or later, folks, in this reaping and sowing, we're going to run into ourselves. Amen. We won't recognize it at first. <laughs> Amen. About 10 years ago, I went to Richland's camp meeting, amen, and David uh, Horton, as usual, found me in the service and uh, bid me come up to his house, and so I did. I didn't know that he was crowded out, that he didn't have any room, amen, so they way down that long hall. I forgot about the offset in the hall where it made a sharp L, and then back to the right again, and amen. I completely forgot about the mirror tile that went all the way from the ceiling to the floor. Amen. In that offset, completely forgot about it. Amen. And they fixed me up. They fixed me a big old bed down in the family room, and I had the whole suite to myself. Amen. That whole end of the house, big old family room, had it to myself. Amen. And I got up about 5 o'clock, dusky, you know, couldn't see very good. Not much light at that time. Wasn't going to beat everybody. Amen. To the bathroom and shave and take a shower and get ready to go to camp meeting. Amen. And uh, I was walking up that long hallway and I saw somebody coming towards me. And uh, uh, his hair was about the color of mine and I thought, that's Charles Barnett. His hair is about the color of mine. He's got a pair, a pair of trousers about that color. Amen. And he was getting closer and closer to me all the time. And I saw that we was going to have a collision, so I zigged to the right real fast, you know, American style, driving to the right. and going to let him pass on my left, and he zigged the same way I did. And so I thought, well, I'm going to have to get out of his way. He's going to run over me. So I zigged to the left real fast. And he decided to do the same thing at the same time. Amen. And I put up my arm, my elbow, just as we collided. And I felt so crazy when I ran into the mirror tile. I had run into myself. Amen. Sooner or later, amen, we're going to, Somewhere around the mountain. Hallelujah, Mike Allen. We're going to run into ourselves. If we've been good and we've been godly and we've been true and we've been faithful, praise God, we're going to run into good and godly and true and faithful. And we're going to be glad when we run into ourselves. Amen. Someday. Amen. You're going to be the boss over a bunch of employees. It was just like you was when you was an employee. <laughs> amen. Some preachers need to reap what they sow. In fact, uh, amen, uh, uh, they do. Amen. 
I heard Brother Cook call Willie Markham on the telephone one morning and tell him how he needed to be faithful to the house of God, that the Lord was coming soon, and how he needed to be faithful. Amen. It wasn't but a few years till Willie answered the call to preach. Amen. And went out to pastor. And you know what Willie did? He inherited some churches along the road that was just like he was, unfaithful. We reap what we so woe be unto us when the day comes and we run into ourselves if we've not been, amen. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God, what we'd like to run into. <laughs> Amen. Woe be unto us, pray God. Oh, yes. Amen. Ah, glory to God. We're driven away by our own wickedness. Verse 32. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. But the righteous have hope in his death. Even in the death of the righteous, there's victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Amen. Our own wickedness. You'll meet it again. It won't be very long till you reap what you sow. Your heart will break a thousand times over when you see your children and grandchildren take the same path that you have taken, that you paved yourself. Take the same gate that you built and go through it even to a worse extent, because we always reap more than what we sow. We always reap more than what we stroke. Amen. Most of the time, more than a hundredfold. Driven away. Amen. Driven out. Driven away by his own wickedness. It would have took the children of Israel a couple of weeks to march into Canaan and claim the land. Amen. But instead of marching into Canaan and claiming the land, God pronounced a dreadful 40 year sentence. Sentence to die in the wilderness of their own making. Amen. That wilderness wasn't fit for a dog to live in. That wilderness wasn't fit for animal or beast to live in. That wilderness was rough and waste and barren. Amen. That wilderness, it was a long way between water holes in that wilderness. God had to send water out of a rock. Amen. Why did he allow the good to go through the wilderness too, the young to go through the wilderness too, that they might learn better than to disobey God? But after 2,000 years, we still haven't learned better. We still think we got one up on God, that we're smarter than God. We know more than the Bible. We know more than the preacher. Well, amen. I'll grant you, there's a bunch of them today that are backslid in heart. Preachers. Amen. Yeah. Heard about a certain preacher taking a certain church. I said they deserve each other. I told a friend of mine about a certain preacher taking a certain church. They deserve each other. Sooner, hey, that's what he said. They deserve each other. He made something they deserve each other. Sooner or later we get just exactly what we deserve. We created the circumstances for it ourselves. Amen. You don't need to tarry. You don't need to wait. You don't need to lag behind. You don't need to be halted between two opinions. The Bible said, how long halt you between two opinions? Amen. You've got a few short chances to go all out for God and to be all that you can be for the glory of God and forevermore to put Jesus first in your life. The reaping's not far off. Amen. A choice. A choice. A clear-cut choice. Verse 34. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin 
is a reproach to any people. Which would you choose? Which would you choose? Well, I tell you, Brother Collins, amen, nobody will be the wiser. It's my own life. It, what I do to myself. I don't hurt nobody else. It's what I, what I do to myself. Ain't nobody else's business. Uh, I'll make my choice. Amen. Did you read in the paper, headlines in the paper yesterday, how that man was uh, awarded uh, in Florida, I think $750,000 against the tobacco company? I'll tell you, he didn't deserve no award. Amen. He made the choice himself. Amen. He's the one that used them cancer sticks. He's the one that bought them. He didn't have to buy them cancer sticks. He didn't have to smoke that tobacco. Amen. He made a choice. And then blame the tobacco company for it. I'll admit. Amen. They make things look awful pretty. They put a handsome man out there on a billboards, you know, in cattle country and said, come to Marlboro country and uh, uh, smoke a thanking man's filter and, and uh, walk a mile for a camel and oh, they make it look good until I've heard women say that I just don't think a man's a man if he don't smoke. You ever hear anybody say that? I have. I would tell who it was. But it would be such dishonor to one, amen, so honorable. Oh, God, amen. I just don't think a man's a man if he don't smoke. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Amen. What'd you say? Stupid, say it real loud. Stupid, you're right. Stupid with a capital S, Amen. We got a choice to make. Righteousness exalteth a nation. Righteousness exalteth an individual. Righteousness exalteth a family. Praise God. Righteousness exalteth anybody that'll buy it. Anybody that'll take that route. Anybody that'll go for it. Hallelujah. What about it this morning? Let's go for it. Let's go for righteousness. What about it this morning? Let's run for it. Amen. Woo, let's run for it. Praise God. I told them last night how that, you know, traffic gets so bad sometimes that you've heard it said that I could walk faster. Well, I proved it Friday. Amen. Randy was having a hard time getting tar chains on the tractor because he couldn't leave the business and drive the tractor up there a mile to the place to get it fixed, Cooper Tire. Amen. And, uh, uh, and so I, I made a special trip down there Amen. And hopped on the tractor and drove it up there a mile with the tire tied to it. To, amen. And drove in there. The only problem was I had to walk back. Amen. And so I, I walked that mile back because he still couldn't leave the business. And so, amen. Say, so why didn't you catch a ride? Because it's going slower than I was. Amen. The road was a traffic jam. Literally. Amen. Is paving the bridge down the middle of Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Amen. And the highway was a traffic jam. Amen. And so I passed everything on the road walking. Amen. I passed by and one lady, you know, all nervous, you know, and, and uh, uh, aggravated. She threw her hand out the window with her cigarette lit and knocked the ashes off of it and almost hit me. And she just laughed because I startled her when I walked by her that way. Amen. I, I passed three big, four big Walmart 18-wheelers uh, like they're sitting still. That's because they was sitting still. Amen. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> Amen. Huh. I started looking down. I picked up a, a half a dozen nuts and bolts, brand new ones, uh, off the road and one nickel off brand new pavement. I mean, it hadn't been it was still brand new pavement. The concrete was still brand new. Amen. But Mike didn't find no dime, but I don't know. I'd say you a dollar and a half for two dollars worth of nuts and bolts. Amen. And one nickel, that's a half a dime, Mike. Amen. If I'd have looked quicker, I might have found the other half. Praise God. But I got down, back down to the shop after walking my mile and getting my exercise and passing everything on the road, literally, 
And I stood down there and watched, real proud, my chest all throat back, you know. While 20, 30 minutes later, all four of them Walmart 18 wheelers, them guys pulling boats, all them other cars, all, they came slowly by. I beat them all walking. Amen. I didn't want to catch a ride to them guys because they was worse off than they was. I was. I was glad for once to be foot loose and fancy free. Amen. I didn't even have a bicycle, but I'm better off than they were. Praise God. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is reproach to any people. Exaltation or reproach. We got a choice to make. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, go with God. Sometimes the wheels of God grind exceedingly slow. But they do grind exceedingly sure. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you know him this morning? Aren't you glad you know the righteousness that exalts a nation? Aren't you glad you know the truth that sets men free? Aren't you glad you know the joy that's unspeakable and full of glory? Aren't you glad, praise God, that your heart's not full of bitterness? Amen. Listen. A heart knoweth his own bitterness. And a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. Amen. Oh, I, you may not uh, <coughs> agree with the paraphrasal that I might give this. Amen. But I don't want to be a stranger to joy. Do you? I'll choose joy. Joel said joy has withered away among the sons of men. Why is the, amen, the fig tree barked? I mean, the locust and the palm worm and the canker worm have done their work while one didn't do, the other one did. Amen. And everything was left bare, no leaves, no bark. Everything was dead. Amen. And God's great army, he said, had done its dreadful joy, our job, and joy had withered away, Joel said, among the sons of men. But he said, amen, if you'll weep between the porch and the altar, if you'll sell out for Jesus, amen, let the bride come out of her closet and the bridegroom, praise God, out of her closet, pray, stop the wedding. The most important thing in the world becomes second best to reclaiming the blessing of God. Amen. Wait a while, praise God. Get something to go into that marriage with, praise God. Weep and cry and seek God and repent. Amen. And it could be he'll leave a blessing behind. Amen. And after you do that, he said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. And your old men shall dream dreams. When the sun's turning black and the moon to blood and the earth's shaking. He said, I pour up on my servants and my handmaidens of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I'll take joy. I'll take Jesus. I'll take the Lord. I'll take the blessing. I'll take the power of God. Stand and raise your hand this morning and claim the promise of God. Hallelujah. The blessing. The blessing. Of putting Jesus first, foremost in our lives. I'm amazed at how long sometimes people go, and I'm amazed how soon people are cut off. Amen. You think you got a long time? Amen. George Jr., 17 year old boy, Sunday night was praying, seeking God, and getting a hold of the Lord. Prayed good. Amen. Got the blessing. Praise God around the altar. Hallelujah. And you know why they could shout over that 17-year-old boy as he had that funeral this week and run the aisles and speak in other tongues and glorify God? Because George Jr., 17-year-old boy, hallelujah, had prayed through real good Sunday night. Sunday night after church, they sent him to the grocery store for some food. Amen. He didn't know. 
he'd never get home. He didn't know he'd lose control. Head on into somebody else and wind up against the tree and live for only a couple hours beside the road. He'd been to his grandpa's funeral just a few days before and they were shouting the victory at his grandpa's funeral. And this week, they shouted the victory over that 17-year-old boy's funeral. Whose will it be next week? Amen. We got a choice to make. I'll take Jesus for mine. Did you hear what I read? It said there is hope in their death. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteousness hath hope in his death. Amen. As they sang, we invite you to an altar of total commitment. A lifetime of putting Jesus first and foremost in everything. Father, bless these broken remarks. Challenge our hearts this morning to come to God ere it's everlastingly too late. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Come on. Working my way. Come on. Working my way. Back Come on. in Calvary. It's been so long since I've been there. Working my way. Working my way. Back I start to work. Calvary. Start to work on it this morning. Go to work for God.